So when we start looking at mixing or mixing down our tracks, I guess the first question is, you know, what can we do? Imagine we have all of these instruments and we've recorded them all on separate tracks that come up on different channels on a mixer. You'll notice the drum kit has been broken out into a kick, snare and a hi-hat. They all have individual uh, channels and then you can mess around with each channel. That's the whole idea of a mixer is that you can individually address each any basically any part of any of these sources you can then mess around now every time I show a mixer to somebody and they see all those rows of knobs and faders and everything people just their eyes gloss over here's the way I deal with it firstly if there are any channels that I'm not using I just get them out of my mind just wipe those guys out of there because it really doesn't matter if a console is you know half a mile long if you just know what one row of uh, knobs and buttons and faders do then it doesn't really matter how many there are in this example we have eight different channels here and whenever I want to do something to a particular uh, element or, or track I always think cross matrix in other words if I wanted to say pan the snare drum I'd look at all the row of pan knobs and then I would cross reference that with my snare track and then bang that's exactly the uh, control that I would go to uh, another example is say if I wanted to EQ my piano I could then go across all those EQ knobs look at the piano and then cross reference that so that's exactly where uh, I need to uh, you know uh, be looking at EQing my piano so really try and not to be uh, you know intimidated by a mixer I know it's hard but um, now, once you get this cross matrix thing down, then you, know, you really don't need to be intimidated, in, intimidated by it. Okay, so let's look at a particular, you know, just an individual channel here. And here's a simplified version of a, a typical channel. And it kind of, it'll give you an idea of the things we can do. So down the bottom we have, uh, we can change the volume and pan by the volume fader and also the pan. We can move things between left and right uh, between our stereo fields. Then, Underneath the aux sends, we can use uh, them to add effects via the aux sends. We talked before about effects sends and returns, in other words, effects loops. So, for example, you could have one effect on uh, aux send 1 and another effect on aux send 2. So you could add just a little bit of reverb on aux send 1 and then a lot of echo on aux send 2. Having differing aux sends allow you to have um, differing amounts for each channel. I think we said before that that's a great way to use just a single effect like say a reverb effect. You could place it across all of your channels and each channel could have differing amounts going out to that, uh, uh, to that reverb unit. Ultimately you can insert effects into just one channel and then you know things like uh, say an EQ or a DS or uh, maybe a compressor they're the kind of effects that you want to insert that goes so the entire signal goes through them rather than using an effect send where you just want a little dab of reverb or something like that. When you're doing DSing, you want the whole signal to go through there to be DS. So if you want compression, you want the whole signal to be compressed, not so a little bit. Now, we'll talk a whole lot more about effects in the dedicated effects section. And then after that, we, then we can change the tonal character via EQ and we'll spend a lot of time on EQ and uh, you know exactly how that can all be done.